for the French coastline, the Riviera name was first used by Buick to designate the new two-door hardtop version of the 1949 Roadmaster. As such, it was 214 inches long on a 126-inch wheelbase, weighed just over 4,400 pounds, with an 150 horsepower, 320 cubic inch V8, and cost $3,200. In 1950, the name would be expanded, not only to include the hardtop coupe version of the smaller Super, but also the best equipped versions of both the Roadmaster and Super sedans. Starting in 1951, this meant the long wheelbase versions specifically, and all two-door hardtops, special Super and Roadmaster. With the addition of four-door hardtops in 1955, all hardtops were considered Rivieras, although they were not always badged as such. New models for 1959 had the Riviera name applied only to the six-window version of the Electra 225, a $4,300 car weighing over 4,600 pounds on a 126-inch wheelbase and powered by a 325-horsepower, 6.6-liter, 401-cubic-inch V8, and just over 6,300 were made. But by this time, GM wanted a piece of the personal luxury coupe market and began developing the Cadillac LaSalle. But the idea of a Cadillac competing directly with even a high-end Ford couldn't be good for their image. So the final product arrived in 1963 as the new Buick Riviera, with styling that was subdued but still cutting edge. Structurally, it was similar to the full-sized Buicks of the time, but with a shorter frame, sharing the double wishbone front suspension, rear live axle, 12-inch aluminum drum brakes, and 325 horsepower, 6.6 liter, 401 cubic inch, nail head V8, and Dynaflow automatic. Standard features included dual exhaust, power windows, power brakes, bucket seats, and a center console with floor shift. It was a comparatively small 208 inches long on a 117 inch wheelbase, weighing in at 4,000 pounds. Starting at $4,300, one was tested with a 0 to 60 of 8.5 seconds, a 16 second quarter mile, and a top speed of 115 miles an hour, while getting 13 miles per gallon. A bigger 340 horsepower, 425 cubic inch, 7 liter V8 was added as an option shortly after initial release. Production was limited to 40,000 cars, of which only 2,600 had the bigger engine. But the bigger engine would become the standard engine for 1964, with a 360 horsepower dual carb super wildcat version becoming the new option, and the Dynaflow was replaced by a turbo hydromatic. And other detail changes included the first use of the stylized R. Riviera logo. 1965 models saw several minor styling updates that included the removal of the fake side vents and the addition of the hidden clamshell headlights similar to the prototype. A vinyl roof was added as an option. The 401 returned as the base engine and a Grand Sport or GS package was added. The GS used the Super Wildcat engine with a 342 rear gear ratio and less restrictive exhaust. Heavy duty suspension was available as an option, but sales had fallen below 35,000. New styling arrived for 1966 that was much more cutting edge. Although mechanically the cars were unchanged, the new body structure was now shared with the Oldsmobile Toronado. The Toronado, however, was front wheel drive, while the Riviera remained rear wheel drive. Prices were now over $4,400, Wheelbase was up to 119, length 211, and weight near 4,200 pounds. Bench seats were now standard, but buckets with a center console was still an option, now with a horseshoe shifter. The 340 horsepower 425 V8 was the only engine, although the GS package was still available. Sales improved to over 45,000. For 1967, the 425 was replaced by a new 360 horsepower, 475 pound-feet of torque, 430 V8. It also saw minor detail changes, mostly to meet new safety regulations, in relation to things such as seat belts and protruding knobs. They got freshened styling for 1968, both inside and out, three inches longer with hidden windshield wipers, and now sharing more interior trim with the standard full-size Buicks and only seeing minor changes for 1969, but sales climbed over 50,000. Another refresh for 1970 made the car much more conservative, with exposed headlights and full fender skirts. 
The engine was upgraded to a 7.5 liter 455 cubic inch V8 with 375 horsepower and 500 pound feet of torque. Gross. Sales were back under 40,000. New cars for 1971 shared their platform with the standard full size GM cars, but on a 122 inch wheelbase and nearly 218 inches long, weighing 4,300 pounds. The new styling attempted to be more sporty with full wheel wells and a boat tail fastback based on the 63 to 67 Corvette. It had full flow ventilation and a max track limited slip differential was made available. Compression was reduced on the 455, lowering output to 315 gross horsepower for the base model and 330 for the GS, which could do 60 in 8 seconds, but sales were still down. 1972 models got 5 mile an hour bumpers and lost another 5 horsepower, although it seemed like much more due to the move to net ratings of 225 and 250 for the GS. The full flow ventilation vents also went away. New bigger bumpers arrived for 1973, adding another 5 inches to the length. The 455 was now offered in base 250 horsepower or 260 horsepower stage 1 and the GS was now a handling package that included a rear stabilizer and wide for the period white wall radial tires. The boat tail went away for 1974, taking on a more conservative colonnade look with available Landau top. Power was down again to 230 and 245 and the max track was dropped and sales dropped to nearly 20,000. The front was updated for 1975 with a more upright angle and rectangular headlights. The Stage 1 was dropped, and the base version was down to 205 horsepower. For 1976, the GS was renamed SR, or Sports Rally. When GM downsized their full-size models in 1977, the Riviera went with them. Now on a 116-inch wheelbase and 218 inches long, it was essentially a more formal looking and better equipped Le Sabre, with prices starting at $6,800. The 455 was gone, with the standard engine being Buick's 155 horsepower 350, with an optional 185 horsepower Oldsmobile 403. California cars got a 170 horsepower Oldsmobile 350. When the Oldsmobile Toronado and Cadillac Eldorado downsized in 1979, the Riviera moved to their front-wheel drive layout. Wheelbase was down another inch, with overall length being a foot shorter. The only carryover engine was the Oldsmobile 350, or 5.7 liter, while the new S-Type used Buick's 170 to 185 horsepower 3.8 liter turbo V6. Prices were up to $11,000 and weight down to 3,800 pounds. The turbo V6 was a mid-17 second car, and a second quicker than the V8 versions. It was named Car of the Year, and sales climbed back to over 50,000. 1981 saw several revisions. Base engine was now a 4.1 liter, 125 horsepower V6. The 350 was dropped, and the Oldsmobile 140 horsepower 5 liter 307 was the V8 option. Well, that and Oldsmobile's 105 horsepower 350 diesel. The turbo was renamed T-Type, and for the first time, a convertible was offered, starting at an unbelievably high $24,000. In 1983, there was a 20th anniversary edition with two-tone paint, a special interior, and gold-plated badges. And Buick made a twin-turbo convertible version with 410 horsepower to act as the Indy 500 pace car, while the popular 5-liter V8 was up to 150 horsepower. 1985 would be the last year of this generation, and it would be the Riviera's best-selling year at over 65,000. Seeing another round of downsizing in 1986, wheelbase was down to 108 inches, length 188 inches, and weight to 3,300 pounds. 142 horsepower, 200 pound-foot of torque, 3.8 liter V6, backed by a four-speed with highway gears, was the only option. Rising to 150 horsepower in 1987 and 165 horsepower in 1988. But sales of this model would plummet, dropping below 9,000 in 1988. Some believing it was because its trim dimensions did not fit its $20,000 plus price tag. Some thought that it was because it looked too much like the compact Somerset Regal. And some felt the similar two-seat Riata 
was stealing some of its thunder. So the body was stretched 11 inches for 1989, and sales increased to back over 20,000 for a couple of years. 1991 gave it another 5 horsepower bump, but sales had started to decline again, and the Riviera would be killed in 1993. But it would return in 1995 using the Oldsmobile Aurora platform and starting at $27,000. It still used Buick's 3.8 liter V6, now in base 205 horsepower and supercharged 225 horsepower versions. First year sales were just over 40,000. For 96, output of the supercharged version was up to 240 horsepower and 60 came in 7 seconds and the quarter mile in 15 and a half but overall sales were half the previous year. 1997 models got updated suspension and transmission, the supercharged engine became standard in 1998, and it got OnStar and heated seats. But sales were down to 11,000, so production was stopped after fewer than 2,099 models were produced. With Riviera Concepts being displayed in both 2007 and 2013, it's easy to believe there is a chance of it coming back, although with the current market, it seems more likely to appear in China than the U.S., or if it does appear in the U.S., it'll probably be an SUV. But as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment below and like and subscribe.